what are some ways to manage cash through the slow season? And frankly, with so many accountants on the call, guys, you have to weigh in. What are some ways to manage cash through the slow season? So let's leave off for a moment preventing the cash slump to begin with, because that's, I think, a different topic and a worthy one. But let's say cash is where it is, and now we're coming up on the slow season. What can we do quickly to, um, to manage that? Um, so a couple of thoughts. So one, um, in, if you have seasons, one source of financing of managing cash that might make sense for your organization is a, uh, is a line of credit. It's not a 30 year mortgage and it's not um, long term debt. Um, it's something that is designed to be temporary. Here, uh, here, Hector. Hang on a second. He asked me a question. I'm just going to post the answer. Um, a line of credit is one way to do it. Also, if you have a reserve account for the rainy day, and you know now it's raining, if you have a savings account, if you have a, a rainy day account, um, if you have, um, let's say, a, a sweep account, and it's time to just reduce that principal for a little while and move that into your operating account, that could be a way to help you get through the slow season. Danielle has a couple of thoughts. She says, profit first. I love that methodology. And if you have any additional specifics to share, that is awesome because here the subtext is, okay, cash for what? If it's cash for you using the profit first methodology, you don't have to worry about that. If it's cash for something else, um, I would love to hear more about what Danielle has in mind. She also shares, check out Fundbox for cash flow management. I've heard of that and I don't have any clients who are using it right now. Although um, we do have clients with um, traditional debt, investment capital, line of credit, um, receivable financing, which is really, really expensive. I would like that's last resort. That's like you already asked your family for money and they said no, or they didn't furnish enough. And then you go to receivable financing because it's just, it's so expensive. And unless you have a lot of things in place and a lot of profitability, it, it can really, it can be a a source of, of financing that can be really good if it's designed to be a one-time fix. But unless you have certain other factors in place, it can be quicksand that you never get out of. So that has to be designed deliberately in order to work for you. Um, but I haven't, I haven't um, used, I don't have a client who's on Fundbox specifically. So it would be really important to learn more about. So I appreciate that. Um, good. So we talk, and if you're in a for-profit industry, you, uh, you might consider, you know, that maybe not just the slow season, but maybe, um, maybe you're considering a business trajectory that's like, um, that's on a new level and you're considering investment capital. If that happens to come during the slow season, then, then more power to you. It'll also help you manage cash during the slow season, you know, when you're in a place where there's nowhere to go but up and you say, look, we're operating this well during the slow season, we're gonna 10 exit during the busy season and we're only going up from here in the big picture, it could be a good time to raise some investment capital, if that's your thing. Funbox is an alternative to factoring. Ooh, that's interesting, Danielle. This is great and more suggestions are coming in. In the trucking industry, factoring invoices is huge business for the factoring company. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, that's great. Um, I didn't realize that was so big in trucking. I've only had one client in trucking over 15 years um, and we didn't get into the issue of financing. So that's great feedback, thank you. Danielle writes in, uh, set up physical checking account to reserve for rainy day, yeah. Exactly, beautiful, beautiful. Helps you maintain and retain your client relationships. That's interesting. Wow. Now, I've never heard anybody talking about a funding source that helps you maintain and retain your client relationship. That is some nice, that is a, a beautiful way to describe what an organization like that does. 
is if you can't serve them, right? If you're growing too fast, or if you're having a, a slow season that's negatively impacting the company, you're either going to contract, right? I mean, cut expenses, but you, there's only so much you can contract, right? You don't want to make a permanent decision for a, a temporary situation. And that that kind of decision making could have um, could result in a loss of client relationships. It's a really good point. Wow, that's a really good point. Thank you, Danielle. All right. Um, so that that really does bring up just one more thing that I want to add in is that in the ways that you look to manage cash through the slow season, recognize that this is temporary. Don't make a permanent decision for a temporary solution. And you know, if depending on your business model, if if you hire people and they know it's temporary, and you hire people for the busy season, that's one thing. But if you take on a team of people and they're expecting stable year-round employment and you say, gosh, we're having a slow season, I'm going to let you go. They're already trained up. They're already part of your team. Do you think they're going to come back in three months when your slow season you know, is over? No, because you lost trust. So design your employment relationships carefully. If you know that you have a busy season and a slow season, it's okay to have change in personnel as long as you design it that way and everybody knows that. So that's that's my last piece on that. Um, always have alignment with the permanency or a temporary nature of your um, of your business cycles.